Hi, in this video I will show you how to use the geomviolin function for ggplot visualizations in R. We start by creating a basic violin plot and then add color to it based on the name of different groups. I will also explain what advantages it has over box plots and why it can help you to visualize the distribution of large amounts of data, but also which weaknesses it has when it comes to small sample sizes. I will show you how to flip it horizontally and how we can detect outliers from the distribution with GeomJitter. And lastly, I will illustrate how to even group it based on two variables with an example about how tip percentages differ based on the day of the week and the sex of the waiter slash waitress by using GeomViolin with position equals dodge. As always, I will be following the examples from the R graph gallery. The next videos will all be about different ways to show distribution, starting today with the violin chart. This is a really amazing website from Jan Holtz, where you can follow easy and well-explained examples for various different plot types. And there's also a way to make violin plots with base R that I will show at the end of the video. Let's get started with the R code. We start by creating a dummy data set with the data frame function that will have two columns, a name and a value column. And we create four groups, A, B, C and D with the wrap function that wants to know what to repeat, X and then how many times. So the first two groups will each have 500 items. Group C will only be repeated 20 times and group D 100 times. We could have saved some lines of codes by using the letters function with capitalized letters 1 and 4 being A, B, C and D and then specifying a times vector that repeats letter A 20 times, B 20 times, C only 5 times and D 10 times. Now the values we assign to each group come from the normal distribution with R saying that we want to have randomized values and then it first wants to know how many with N 500 what the mean is supposed to be 10 and the standard deviation 5. So group A will have a normal distribution with 10 as the center and 5 as standard deviation. The next 500 items for group B will come from two different normal distributions, 250 with a mean of 13 and a smaller standard deviation and, and another 250 with a mean of 18 and the same standard deviation. The third distribution only has 20 items with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 4 and the last one 100 with a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 12. Now for plotting all we have to do is use the ggplot function with data equals data and then it needs a mapping which has the aesthetics for x being name and y being value and then we add the geom violin. Another way to do this is to pipe the data into the ggplot function and then you can abbreviate all of this with just aes name value and then add geom violin. An easy way to add colors to each group is to specify one more argument within the aes mapping function namely fill by name and if you forget to do this in the aesthetics mapping you can also include it within the actual geom so in the geom violin function you can always add more information to get the exact same result. For the example of violin plots in a horizontal format, we choose an example data set where respondents assigned a probability percentage from 0 to 100% to various terms, so almost certainly got a high probability to happen about even in a 50-50 range, almost no chance being very low, and then different representations of a very good chance to be believed and likely. The data comes in a byte format, so for ggplot it needs to be a tidy or long format, so some data manipulation with gather and mutate and cleanup steps and then a filter are needed. Okay, a couple of things to say. The Viridis package and the theme Ipsum are responsible for the different colors, and we load this with the following packages. Four cats is the package package we use to reorder the text values, otherwise the plotting would be alphabetical and not from highest to lowest probabilities. We do this with a mutate before it comes to the actual plotting. And here you can already see the problem of having a redundant legend that has the same values as the x-axis labels and we can get rid of it by adding theme legend position equals none. And now you see why we want to have it horizontally because the text is overlapping. So we add corded flip. We can approve upon the x and y axis labels by removing the text from the now flipped x axis and rewrite value to assign probability in percentages. The width argument is responsible for the space we give each violin plot to expand and the size argument is responsible for the border outline. If we set it to 1.2 you can, will see that 
the borders increase quite a bit and the fill text is responsible for choosing a different color for each category if we want the border not to be in black but also have the same color as the filling we would have to specify this with color equals text and something very useful for outlaw detection is to add the geom jitter because now you can see that there was one person who assigned almost no chance a very high probability so maybe misunderstood the question thinking that oh almost no chance means there's 95 percent chance it wouldn't happen little chance this is a clear outlier with 100 percent and we believe with five to ten percent that's debatable maybe we believe triggers for some people a very low percentage of probability coming back to our original dummy data now i want to show what the advantages is compared to box plots and for this we want to include the sample size you will get to the sample size by two different ways either you group by the name and then you summarize to count the number of entries with the n function and save it as num and then this is what you would get a new num column with the number of group items you could also use the count function that automatically creates a new column called n based on the name and the data you feed in to add a box plot to the graph, all you have to do is add another geom, geom box plot, where you can specify the color, and then you overlay it to the original violin plot. What also happened is we left joined the sample size to the data and then in mutate introduced line breaks and n to have the actual sample size in the x-axis. And here you see the one major advantage of violin plots for bimodal distributions. The box plot wouldn't show you that they exist. They would just show you the median in the middle and neglecting the shape and spread of the data. Also with the box plot showing 50% of the data included in the box, it's sometimes tricky to know how the actual shape of the the distribution extends. Another useful thing to do is to add geom jitter to the plot instead of the box plot to see all of the numbers used. But here I recommend to switch the order to first plot the points and then the violin with an alpha of 0.7 so it's a bit opaque and you see the dots in the background. And here you see how important the sample size is. So for 500 data points, it can clearly show the bimodal distribution and for 100 also shows if the standard deviation is smaller. But when you get to a small sample size like 20, the violin plot might look like a bimodal distribution, but it's simply a normal distribution with low sample size and higher variation. So if you have little data, always show all the points. And if you have a lot of data, a violin chart can give insights that the box plot simply cannot. For the last example of group violin charts, we load a data set from GitHub where the tip of the total bill is reported and we can use mutate to turn this into a percentage. Now we have 244 entries of seven columns with the total bill, the percentage, and then the sex of the waiter or waitress and on which day the dinner was happening. We specify the levels of the day to get not the alphabetic order, but the actual weekday order. We put day on the x-axis and the tip percentage on the y-axis and now we use fills sex to specify the second variable we want to visualize and now all we have to do within geom violin is to use position equals dodge to not have them overlay over each other but be next to each other and here you can see that there's quite a bit of a spread for the percentage of tips ranging from 10 to 25 percent with the median being somewhere around 15 to 17 percent and only real difference seems to be on friday where female waitresses earn quite a bit more than male waiters there is a way to build violin plots without ggplot where you have to load the violin plot package and here an easy example we simulate three different groups with 40 values that are sampled from the distribution 2 to 5 and a mixed distribution from 1 5 and 12 to 17 40 times and then a distribution with a bit more spread and if you want to use violin plot for multiple groups you have to use the setup with width that gets the data input and then different values for treatment where you can use the names function to label the groups the advantage with violin Violin plot is that it puts a white big dot in the middle where the median of the distribution is. This concludes the tutorial on violin plots in R. If you want to be notified of more examples from the R graph gallery, then subscribe to the channel and see you next time here at the Data Digest. <laughs>